This is Mindustry, a sandbox tower defense game that draws elements from real-time strategy games like StarCraft and construction management games like Factorio. In the campaign, you play as the Sharded. Your goal is to take back the planet from the Crux by securing the 18 named sectors. There are two types, attack and defense. The defense sectors are very similar to any other tower defense game. You must keep your core safe while the enemy sends wave after wave until they run out of troops. Attack sectors are my favorite. The Crux will already have a base established in the area, and you are to use any means necessary to destroy their core while simultaneously keeping yours alive. There are a myriad of unique turrets in the game to employ in your defense, but I will not be building any of these, and if I start with any turrets at the beginning of a sector, I must delete them as soon as possible. There are plenty of sectors to get through, so let's get started. Ground Zero is usually the easy introductory sector, where you first learn to collect resources, put them toward research, and build a base, all while the Crux send their meager forces to keep you on your toes. Without towers, this sector would be impossible, but fortunately the construction vehicle you are given has a tiny little gun on it. And although I'm banned from building towers for this challenge run, walls are perfectly legal. Killing the enemy is slow and tedious, and I have to repair my wall by reclaiming and rebuilding it after each wave. But it gets done. That is, until the second last wave. I ended up losing two whole times on the easiest sector in the game because of this wave. Both times were because I underestimate the amount of damage the enemies here could do. So on my third attempt, I build my walls four layers thick and still nearly let this wave best me. The final wave is a joke by comparison, so I'm able to finally capture this sector and move on. The next named sector is Frozen Forest. But I'm not going there. Instead, I head to the unnamed sector 175. If I went to Frozen Forest, I would have had to deal with even more waves consisting of stronger units, and I still only have this little guy for defense. In 175, the wave consists of different enemies. These ones explode when they come into contact with my buildings, and we're able to hold them off by just building a few walls near their spawn point. Doing this gives us time to exploit this sector's plentiful resources. Here we have access to arguably the most important resources in the game, sand and coal. Coal alone can be used to power things in our base like menders and refinery blocks, but if we combine it with sand, we get silicon. I need to quickly produce as much of this as possible, as it is a requisite to unlock the ground factory and start making our first units. A new update allowed us to control them like you would in an RTS, so you can easily position them wherever they're needed. These units are what make this challenge run possible. Although I now have more firepower, this does not guarantee my safety. Due to some questionable decisions and some new enemies being introduced, my defense is far from airtight, but I am still able to secure the sector on my first attempt. We can now finally head to the official second sector of the campaign. Every time you launch into a new sector, you're able to take some resources from the previous sector with you. This means I don't need to spend time collecting and refining resources on site. And since Frozen Forest has no sand, this is the only way I'm able to get silicon and make units here, and having them here trivializes this sector. I build a wall, set my bots up behind it, and I'm able to skip through the waves and move on. Capturing Frozen Forest unlocked a new type of drill, so I head back over to 175. Here, we can use the drill to unlock a new resource, Titanium. 175 will act as my main base slash staging area for most of this run so I spend some time here developing my economy before I move on to the third sector of the campaign. The Craters is where you would normally see silicon for the first time, but it also introduces us to another refinable resource, Metaglass. With Metaglass, we are able to pump water around the map to increase the output of our drills and fuel steam generators for more power. I also realized that when I unlocked Titanium, I was granted access to the laser drill, this drill will allow me to get resources much more quickly than I had been able to before, but it comes with the downside of needing power to operate. I'm able to get out my units, set up a wall, and for the most part, this sector goes quite smoothly. Until disaster. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> shit, um... Okay, shit, I gotta blow up all my units now. Pause. Now to shed some light on the seemingly random clip you just heard. I had been streaming this challenge run on Twitch this whole time, and on Twitch, I have it set up so that my viewers are able to spend their channel points to make me do stupid things, one of which is to blow up all my units as soon as possible. The quickest way for me to do that right now is to run my precious babies into the drop zone and press play. 
anything within the drop zone when a wave is spawned dies instantly. So now, not only are all my defenders dead, but I immediately have to deal with a wave of enemies. Fortunately, a few replacement units are already marching back to the front lines, but I take too much damage and end up respawning back at the core. By the time I get back to the front lines, my two soldiers have fallen, but I'm able to clean up the daggers and prepare for the next wave. I repair the wall, but notice I'm out of power. As I'm trying to remedy that, another wave spawns, and this is where overconfidence gets me again. I assume my defenses will hold, but when I go to check, I see that the wall has been breached and all of my units are dead once again. I'm able to hold them off, but they've already done serious damage, and the next wave is just about to drop. I quickly fly over to the choke point to start another wall, but without blocking off the top, they'll just go around. I finish closing off the top just as they approach, and with the two flares I have left, I'm barely able to hold on for one more wave. I know it's going to be nearly impossible to survive without more units, but with my production in shambles, it's going to take time to get everything up and running again. Time that I simply don't have. I'm able to get a couple of my factories going again right as the next wave spawns, but I forget to set up a defense against the crawlers. I frantically spam down walls for them to run into, but a single one slips through and is able to set my unit count back to zero. And here come the daggers. Alone, I'm unable to hold this position. I pull back to my core and desperately start loading my factories manually. My only hope now is to get units out before they get to the core. And it works! But the next wave is seconds away. There's no way I'm going to be able to undo the damage they've done. With just one wave left, I book it to the wall in hopes of reinforcing it enough to survive the final wave. As the wave drops, I'm met with a large, flying, tier 3 unit. A zenith. I ignore it initially so I can deal with the crawlers with wall spam. The zenith is programmed to go after any power generation on the map, so I have a short window of opportunity to do something smart while it's distracted. But instead, I just shoot at it. By the time it's done killing all my generators, the daggers at the front have broken through the wall. This distracts me long enough to let the four daggers of my own get killed by the zenith. I refocus and get my flares to target the zenith down as it starts shooting at my core. I need to spam walls in front of it to prevent damage from getting through. And my four valiant flares do it. But now, the swarm of daggers is on my doorstep. I put the flares into a defensive position and start spamming walls once again. One dagger goes down, two, and then I lose. This has been quite the wake-up call. From now on, it's time to start taking things seriously. Before trying this sector again, I unlock the Foundation Core. This provides various benefits. I'm now able to store more resources, my construction vehicle gets an upgrade, and most importantly, I go from being able to build only 8 of each unit to 16. I also realize I have access to another unit type, the Nova. They're much like daggers, but they also heal friendly units around them. I take no chances this time, and choose to wall off at the choke point. This gives me much more space for wall spam to deal with the crawlers, and after I mass up a huge army, this sector is secured with ease. The next sector I go to is Biomass Synthesis Facility. Just like Frozen Forest, there isn't anything of value to us here. I build my wall and put plenty of units behind it and clear the sector without a hitch. Ruinous Shores is next, and much like the last sector, there isn't much for us to do here. It is at this point that I remember about the unattended sector mechanic. If you leave a sector before it's secured, the game will do a calculation to determine how long it will last, and the game will continue in the background while you're away. If you click on the sector in the planet map, it will tell you exactly how long your defenses will survive. Using this mechanic allows me to be in two places at once and save a lot of time. I make sure my defense will get through every wave, then head to Stained Mountains, another sector that has next to no value to us. I quickly set up a defense that will carry us through the waves, and leave. At this point, I need to wait for those two sectors to be captured in order to unlock the next parts of the campaign. So I jump back to 175 to spend my time further developing my home base. The base goes from looking like this, to this, and my output is increased significantly. This takes me a while, but with Ruinous Shores and Stained Mountains now captured, I'm able to research the naval factory and move on to Windswept Islands. I build a few boats, check to see if I'll survive, and move on to our first attack sector of the run, Fungal Pass. 
The game gives you a small base to start off with, but much of it is poorly optimized, so I reclaim it and start up my unit spam. Being the first attack sector means Fungal Pass is a breeze. I don't have to wait long till I have a sizable force, and I'm able to crush through their meager defenses with ease. Capturing Fungal Pass unlocks another attack map, Overgrowth. The enemy base here is much more robust. I won't be able to simply walk through their defenses with a ball of mechs this time. I have to get creative. So now, I get to introduce you to Spore Bombing. Most units in the game are actually able to carry resources. You've seen me use this feature to collect ores and feed factories earlier in the run, but now it's time to use it for offense. Certain resources are especially volatile and will explode if the vessel they are in is destroyed. Spore pods are one of these resources, and I had been producing them at 175 for just this purpose. The enemy core is tucked away in a corner. While that might seem like a good idea, this actually allows us to skirt air units around the edge of the map, completely avoiding most of their defenses. The turrets near the core will easily be able to kill our flares before they can do any damage directly, but that's why I loaded them with the spore pods. I dive the flares directly on top of the core, and when they die, they spew what is essentially napalm all over the enemy core. All I have to do now is wait, and the core falls. After capturing them, if you take a look at Fungal Pass and Overgrowth on the planet map, you'll see that they are vulnerable. This is because of the attack sectors nearby. If you wait long enough, the enemies will attack again, and you'll have to recapture it like you would a defense sector. I don't want to deal with this, so I go on the offensive and launch into the sector between them. After some quick scouting, I see that Spore Bombing will be just as effective here. The main drawback for Spore Bombing is that loading your units can be tedious. I cut it out in the last sector, but it took me a while to take control of each unit and fill them individually. So this time, I took a different approach. There's basic coding in the game via logic processor blocks, which you can use to control your buildings, units, and do some other fun things. I put together some simple code to get my units to pick up spore pods by themselves with the push of a button and I'm able to capture the sector before the first wave even spawns. I head back to Overgrowth now to gain access to the final mineable resource, Thorium. We're gonna need a lot of this, so I spend a good amount of time here. At this point, I meant to clear out the second attack sector near Overgrowth, but I just blatantly forgot. I sure hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. I head to Tar Fields next. It's another defense sector, but this time it's an important one. It has an abundance of all the resources in the game, which makes it a perfect candidate to be our new main base. I don't spend too much time here yet, because I want to develop my economy without having to worry about enemies destroying my hard work. So I make sure to build up a force substantial enough to survive the waves and quickly move on to another sector. Salt Flats is my destination of choice. This is another attack map. The enemy base here is less susceptible to spore bombing than the others we've seen. Their air defenses are spread out around the core, such that if we were to dive bomb the core again, our flares would die before getting there. That's where Novas come in. Novas are ground units, so they're untargetable by their air defenses, and they also have jet boosters which allow them to fly over terrain. When they are in the air, they're targetable just like any other air unit, but there's a spot behind the enemy's defenses where they're able to land and can destroy the air defenses protecting the core. With them out of the way, our flares are easily able to reach the core and set it ablaze. After another bombing run for good measure, we capture the sector and can move on to the next. The next sector is Extraction Outpost. This is the first enemy base that hard counters spore bombing. There are wave turrets that put out any fires, and menders that will quickly repair any damage to the core. Not only that, but the turrets protecting the base are by far the most powerful we've seen thus far. Fortunately, they have a glaring weakness. Our daggers and novas are easily able to outrange them, and with some clever positioning, we clear the space in under 7 minutes. Coastline is another defense sector that we capture just by spamming units. And so is Impact. There are now only 4 sectors left in the campaign, and they're all considerably more difficult than every other sector we've seen. Up until this point, we've only been using Tier 1 and 2 units. To crack these final maps, we're going to have to tech up drastically. I spend hours in previously captured sectors like Tar Fields, Overgrowth, and 175, just tearing down old infrastructure and upgrading everything to increase production. 
I researched the tier 3 unit maker and a bunch of other blocks that will help us greatly. We also get another core upgrade that will allow us to have up to 24 units of each type instead of only 16. During this time, we make sure to mass produce the three end game resources, Plastanium, Surge Alloy, and Phase Fabric. There are some key buildings that need to be researched in order to unlock the final sector and we're going to need a lot of these to get them. Naval Fortress, an attack sector, is the first one we go for. There are two cores to destroy here. The one in the back is dealt with with relative ease. We send a couple waves of flares, this time loaded with the more powerful pyrotite, to take out key infrastructure from behind, where there is a gap in their defenses, and that core eventually falls to the flames. The stronger of the two cores is located on an island and is surrounded with hard-hitting towers and protected by flame-extinguishing turrets and mend projectors. The only way I was able to crack this was with multiple waves of T1 and T2 boats. I've been dreading nuclear production complex since I first came up with the idea for this challenge run. On my first ever playthrough of the campaign, I was able to get through 49 out of the 50 waves no problem, but was blindsided by the boss fight at the end and completely got destroyed, and I'm not about to make the same mistake again. I start off by quickly pumping out support units and some fighting units for defense. I then build a wall for my units to hide behind and add men projectors and repair towers to ensure everything stays healed up between waves. I'm just about to build more thermal generators for power when I realize I've completely run out of silicon. You need silicon for everything in the late game so this needs to be dealt with ASAP. I'm forced to reclaim some of the factories so I can get back just enough silicon to make more silicon. Before long, I'm able to get two silicon crucibles up and keep them fed with sand, coal, and lead. This will be enough until I start making T3, and at this point, I feel pretty comfortable with the number of units I have. So now, it's time to work on my economy. At this point, I'm making every important resource in the game and have power to spare. It's time to start making my first T3 units. Someone in my Twitch chat tells me to build Spyrocked first. They fire short range lasers that weaken and slow their target. Perfect for killing waves of enemies that walk right into you. After the factory is online, I place down an overdrive projector near my core. This building will boost the speed of everything within its area of effect by 250%. It normally takes 30 seconds for one Spyrock to be built, but with the boost from this building, it takes only 12 seconds. I realize I'm running out of coal, so I turn my attention to that for only a couple minutes, and I'm pleasantly surprised by how many units are waiting for me when I return. This marks the beginning of the end for my enemy. With my bustling economy, I'm also able to constantly produce other powerful T3 units like the Quasar, Fortress, Mega, and Zenith one of which was able to wreak havoc on me earlier in the run. The Crux send T3 of their own, but they aren't able to hold a candle to the power of my army. It's finally time for the boss fight. It's a massive T5 air unit, but it's going up against over 50 T3 units and an assortment of T1s and 2s. It melts quickly, and I'm able to move on to the second last sector of the game. Desolate Rift also has a T5 boss fight, in its final wave. But the difference here is that you have only 18 waves to prepare instead of 50. After such a decisive victory, I confidently launch into the hardest defense sector in the campaign, only to realize I somehow forgot to bring one of the most basic and essential resources, lead. Lead is a plentiful and easy to acquire ore on every map, so even though I'm able to resolve this issue quickly, this was a huge and easily avoidable setback that left me with no units to defend myself. Wave 1 was just a bunch of crawlers. We know how to deal with them. But when wave 2 rolls around, I simply don't have an answer. If I were to build turrets, this would have been easy to defend against, but units take time to build, and I end up losing my core for the first time since craters. Round 2 starts off much more smoothly. Without having to worry about lead, I'm able to get my wall up and shielded with 6 Spyrocked behind it before even the first wave spawns. 
I continue to produce T3 and improve my defense with more shield projectors and repair towers, and I am able to beat this sector without a sweat. All I need to do now is make sure I have the necessary buildings researched to unlock the final sector, and I'll be able to... Wait, what? I didn't realize until this moment, but Overgrowth is under attack. I hurriedly jump into the sector, but I'm too late to the party. The waves slowly and painfully overwhelm me, and I end up losing. And now I have to recapture the sector. Since I already cleared out the enemy base here way earlier in the run, I just have to survive the waves as if it were a defense sector. I start out my usual way and everything is smooth sailing. That is, until nuclear production comes under attack as well. I check the planet map to see if I would survive if I were to leave it unattended, and to my dismay, it would only survive two waves if I don't intervene. I'm forced to abandon my efforts here to babysit nuclear production and end up losing overgrowth another time. I quickly skip through the waves and secure the sector. I now must go back to overgrowth a third time. This is getting old. I recapture it without any problems and now can finally hit the last sector. Planetary Launch Facility is by far the strongest base in the campaign. It sports incredibly powerful endgame turrets. High damage railguns that outrange everything in the game, huge laser emitters that will melt groups of smaller enemies in an instant, and massive autocannons that shoot piercing rounds at long range. But just like all other attack sectors thus far, this one has a huge weakness. At this point, I've really hit my stride. I methodically build power generators, factories for support and defense units, collect materials, refine them into metaglass, silicon, and graphite, dome everything and proceed to spam dozens of T3. This time, we're building the Bride and the Cer Cersei? Curse? I don't know how to pronounce that. My death fleet grows quickly, and before long, I'm ready to go on the offensive. With boats, I can just bypass most of the enemy's inland defenses. All I have to do is take out this small outpost, and just like that, I'm able to dive directly onto the core. I charge head-on, making sure to target down the laser tower that poses the biggest threat to my navy, and ignoring everything else completely to just gun down the core. And just like that, the Mind Street campaign is beaten without using a single tower. This challenge run was surprisingly straightforward. I have many more challenge run ideas for the future, but feel free to leave your own ideas in the comments. I'll stream any future challenge runs on Twitch, so come by if you want to see it live. Yay, we did it! We beat the game! Woo!